Okay, good evening everyone. Let's get started with tonight's presentation, which is the process to find trading opportunities. I'm Tyler Ballhorn, founder of StockScores.com. Great to have you all with us tonight. I'm going to talk for probably 45 minutes to an hour in this presentation. It's an all-new presentation. I just built it yesterday and it will cover some, I think, fairly new, maybe a little bit more advanced topics than some of my other webinars that I've done in the past. Um, I just want to make sure I'm coming through loud and clear. If uh, you can uh, just type a quick something in the question box to say that you're hearing me okay. Sounds like that's working. I am recording tonight's presentation, so um, you will get, uh, as long as there's no technical problems, you will get uh, an email uh, either later tonight or tomorrow, probably tomorrow, with a link to the video on YouTube. All right, so let's get into what tonight's presentation is going to be about. First of all, I'm going to explain what strategy trading is. We'll talk about this concept of expected value. I'm going to show you an equity curve and what, what an equity curve is. I'll, I'll describe what it is and, and show you one on a uh, strategy that I've been testing uh, through the month of September. And then, more importantly, the real meat of tonight's presentation is I'm going to take you through the process that I use to apply different strategies. So I'll do a long-term strategy, something called the Stock Score Simple Weekly. Then I will do a swing trading strategy, which is much shorter term, and that is the Stock Score Simple Swing. And then I'll show you the process that I use to find day trades. And uh, just kind of walk you through each one so you get a sense of the, you know, the tools that I use, the steps that I take, and kind of get a sense of whether one of these approaches to trading is right for you. Um, not everyone wants to day trade. Not everyone wants to be a longer term investor. Uh, there's, you know, depending on the time that you have and your interest, there's a style of trading that's probably good for you. And my goal tonight is to show you three and give you a sense of um, how they work so you can decide which one might fit your um, approach to the market. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Stock Scores Trader training on the website. I'm also going to talk a little bit about a service that I'm doing in October for active live trading, uh, where you can watch me trade live um, if you are one of my active trader students. And we'll just kind of go into that at the end. And then we'll wrap it up. All right, so what is strategy trading? Um, trading stocks based on rules that have been tested over a large number of trades. So essentially what you're doing is you're coming up with rules for when to buy, when to sell, how to manage risk, how to size your positions, all of that sort of thing. And it's very logic based. It's sort of, um, you know, if this and this and this happen, you buy. If this and this and this happen, you sell. It's the kind of thing that computers can do. And you've probably heard a lot about algorithmic trading, high frequency trading, computer based trading. Roughly half of the volume on the New York Stock Exchange right now is driven by a computer. And that is basically rules-based strategy trading. I've been a strategy rules-based trader for uh, probably 15 or 20 years. Um, I don't completely automate what I do. I would say 80% of what I do is automated, and I'll show you some of my tools that I use for that. I still play a role in that decision, and that's, I guess, the final 20% of the decision. Um, but there are some who have completely automated strategies and just have the computer run it. My strategies are a little bit more, um, I don't want to say sophisticated, but they require things that I haven't quite figured out how to use a computer to do. Not that it's impossible, but it's a little bit difficult. Um, some of the skills that I, I teach people in terms of how to read chart patterns and that sort of thing, a um, little bit harder to uh, program a computer to do. So that's why I'm sort of an 80% computerized, 20% uh, human trader. What I want to do as a strategy trader is focus on trading strategies that have a positive expected value. And I'll be describing what I mean by that um, as we go through the presentation tonight. But um, that's a real key concept is understanding this idea of expected value. Once you have a strategy with a positive expected value, then you can test it over a large number of trades and see what the equity curve looks like. 
the equity curve is basically how that strategy performed over time in terms of profit and loss. And it accumulates the profits and the losses day by day. And you get a curve of growth or, you know, hopefully not, but possibly decline in the value that you have created from that strategy. And that's called an equity curve. So I'll show you one, as I said, for a strategy that I've been testing through the month of September, just to give you a sense of how they work and what's important when you are looking at equity curves. Now, I utilize computer-based tools. Uh, my website, stockscores.com, was created in 2001. So it's been around uh, 15 years now, actually 2000. Uh, so 16 years now. And it is computer-based tools. that we, we run analytics um, throughout the day looking for certain rules to be satisfied. And you can scan the market in you know, mere seconds to identify stocks and meet those rules. Um, I have some other tools that I use in a software platform called TradeStation, which is a um, software company based in, uh, I think, Florida in the United States. And they also are a strategy-based trading application. But it's also important to understand that when you develop these rules for strategy trading, you have to make sure that the application of them is practical. Now, high-frequency trading is something that gets a lot of press and it's basically the trading of the market in microseconds where a computer buys and sells very very quickly using speed as its advantage that is not uh, practical that that approach is not practical for me because i don't have the um, co-location where i'm very close to the stock exchanges where i've got these uh, ultra fast communication um, highways that can fulfill orders between Chicago and LA and or not Chicago and LA Chicago and New York the futures markets and the equity markets and you know that's a game that requires millions and millions of dollars of investment and it's just not practical for me sitting in my office buying and selling stocks however what is practical for me is to do the sort of 80 percent computer 20 percent human type of trading it's a, a variety of algorithmic trading where I've got a set of rules, the computer does most of the work so that I can identify things before most people do and I can act quickly enough to get on board these stocks before they make their big move and beat the crowd. And, and I'm using some tools and some methods and some processes that give me that advantage. So those strategies for me are practical. If you don't really um, like to make decisions very quickly then maybe day trading isn't a practical approach for you. Maybe you want to do more trading on the weekends where you do your analysis using the process I'll show you in a moment and you don't have to make your decision really quickly. You can think about it for three or four days if you want because it's not so time sensitive. So there's many different approaches to the market. You have to pick the one that's right for you and that's my purpose tonight is to try to demonstrate some things that you can do to identify the right strategy for you. Now, developing strategy rules is a very time-consuming process. I've been um, testing my day trading strategies through the month of September. I spend probably one to two hours a day, maybe even more, just building the data for that analysis. Um, and this is even not including the amount of time it took to come up with the rules. So I came up with the rules a long time ago. These particular strategies, some of them I developed 10 years ago, one maybe three years ago. I tested them maybe two years ago, and I thought it was time to do another test just to see if I needed to refine some of those rules. And I've made some small refinements, nothing major to be quite frank. In fact, it's quite insightful to see that two years after I did my last study, the results are almost the same. The only improvement I guess I've made is by tweaking some of the rules, I have been able to find more candidates than I used to. And so it generates more trading ideas. But anyway, my point is that it's a very time-consuming process. It takes hours and hours. You have to have a pretty good understanding of how to use a program like Excel, Microsoft Excel. Um, TradeStation is a big help. You have to understand logic and making sure you don't put any biases into your strategy. But it all starts with an idea for making money in the market. So my idea might start with this you know, focus that I've always had on abnormal trading activity, price movement that's abnormal, volume traded that is abnormal 
those are things that kind of the basis for all my strategies. So that's the starting point. And then I come up with some rules and I test them and I maybe tweak the rules and I test them again and I tweak the rules. And over time, I'm testing the idea over a large number of trades, you know, to come up with five rules for when to buy and three for rules for when to sell and testing those rules on, you know, 12 trades doesn't really give you much insight into whether the strategy is going to be successful. You have to test them over, you know, I would say at least 50, but this particular study I'm doing, I think I'm probably over 300 trades. Uh, I'm not certain of that, but I, I would guess I'm over 300 trades for the month of September that is in the test. And the more you can do it, the more you can start to see some real insight into, you know, what are the best exit rules? And what if I tweak this one exit rule? How does that change my results? So that's what I do. I've been doing that approach um, for, you know, maybe 20 of the 26 years that I've been trading and really getting computerized with it in the last 10 years, I would say, 10 or 15 years, yeah, 15 years. And, um, but I never stop. You know, I, I developed some of these strategies a long time ago and I'm testing them again because I felt like it was a good idea and, and um, some of the improvements I've made to the rules are, are making more money. That's great. One of the keys when you're testing is to avoid bias. It's uh, easy as human beings to, you know, sort of see what we want to see. And when you're doing testing, it's very difficult to overcome that problem. Um, and you have to use some tricks and, and really try to keep your human emotions out of it. Ultimately, the goal, very simply, is to develop a strategy that makes money. So that's what I do. Now let's talk about what it means to make money because everyone will have a different sense of that. But I want to describe this concept of expected value because it's really, the I think, the core method that you want to use for defining whether a strategy actually makes money or not. It's not enough to say, hey, I made $1,000 on my last trade. Must be a good strategy. That's A, not a large sample size, and B, it doesn't factor in the risk that you took. So when we talk about positive expected value, we want a strategy that makes a profit over time, over many, many trades. We can't judge our strategy a success if it makes money over five trades. Who cares? And you shouldn't call a strategy a failure because it loses 10 trades in a row. I've actually had periods, you know, single days or a couple days in a row perhaps, when I've lost 10, 15 times in a row. And that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the strategy. When you make this judgment, you have to have a large sample size. So as I said, I'm doing the study now and I've got hundreds of trades in the study and I can see that over the course of hundreds of trades, this particular strategy is profitable. So what do we mean by profitable? Well, there's a little formula that I use. It is the probability of profit times, so multiplied by, the expected profit, and I'll talk about this in a moment, and subtract from that the probability of loss times the expected loss. Now, you can only know these key numbers by testing. So I'm doing my test right now, and I might find that my strategy has a 60%. These aren't the real numbers. I'll just sort of make this up as I go along. A 60% chance of making $2 a trade and a 40% chance of losing $1 a trade. And that comes from the test, from doing lots and lots of um, trades and entering them into a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet where I can do some analysis. I can find the probabilities, the average profit when I'm right, the average loss when I'm wrong for different levels of risk and, and using different exit rules and that sort of thing and experiment to find which combination has the best expected value. So those numbers are found from testing. Okay, um, You don't have to do the testing. I, I do it. I sell my strategies in my courses and um, you can either develop your own strategies and figure it out yourself or you can go to someone like me and have me teach you my particular strategies. And there's other people that teach strategies. Very few of the people out there teaching really do this properly, though, in, in terms of the, um, I don't want to say scientific, but the, the, the methodical approach to developing a strategy and understanding the uh, positive expected value concept. Now, this concept assumes that history will repeat itself, and there's no guarantee of that. 
you know, my strategy that I'm testing now through September has been quite profitable. And September hasn't been a good month. September is never really a good month for the market. But even in a, I would say, a bad month, the strategy is making money. And that's great, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't make money next month. And we should never assume that history will repeat itself. Now, these particular concepts that are part of this strategy have been successful for many years. The, the many years that I've been trading these concepts, it works. But that doesn't mean it goes doesn't go through cold periods where you know you have a week or two or it doesn't do great. And you'll see in my um, equity curve in a moment that I'll show you some of that. Um, and that's the key thing is you want to make sure that it does well consistently with the recognition that there's going to be bad days for any strategy. Or if it's a longer term strategy, there's going to be bad weeks or months even. But the more you test over a broad range of market conditions, the more likely your testing will predict the future. Okay, so if you do a test where you have 10 trades in your sample, it's probably not a great predictor. If you do a test where you have 100 more predictive, if you do a test where you have 1,000 even more predictive. And more importantly, if you do your test, um, you know, in the month of September and then you wait a few months and you do it in the month of um, February and you do it in a down market and then you try doing it in an up market, if you do tests across different market conditions and that sort of thing and you find that it consistently does well, well what you have done is done a better prediction of the future. So the more testing you can do, the better it predicts the future. But at the same time, there's no guarantee it will work in the future. That's the nature of strategy trading. And if you read a little bit about algorithmic trading, You'll read about, I read about this uh, couple of guys in New York City who had this great algorithm. It was making the money day by day by day. It was all computer driven. They had no human intervention. And then one day they just completely stopped working. And what happened was someone figured a better way to beat them to the trade and their strategy no longer worked. And, you know, they kind of talk about how they had to totally reassess and, and rebuild and write a new strategy. And, and these guys are smart guys. They were able to do that. All right, so let's consider some examples of expected value. Strategy A makes a profit 82% of the time. Strategy B makes a profit 61% of the time. And I'm going to ask you kind of a rhetorical question, you don't have to answer, but think in your own head, which is the better strategy? Is strategy A better at 82% of the time it making, makes money? Or is strategy B better, which makes money 61% of the time? Well, most people would say, Strategy A is better. But I will caution you because you actually do not have enough information to answer this question. Because there is no mention of how much you make 82% of the time and how much you lose in this particular example when you're wrong. What if you lose a lot when you lose with this strategy, which only happens 18% of the time, and on this one, when you lose 39% of the time, you have a relatively small loss, and a much bigger profit. So that leads me to the next slide where we put some numbers to it. Now let's say that strategy A makes a profit of $300 when it's right. Now remember that was 82% of the time. And it loses $900 when it is wrong. And that of course would be 18% of the time since 18 plus 82 equals 100%. Now strategy B makes $700 when it is right. Sorry, that's my trade station connecting there. Uh, strategy B makes a profit of $700 when it is right and loses $300 when it is wrong. Now, which strategy is better? I'm going to pause for a moment because some of you may actually want to figure out which strategy is better. Some of you may not know how to figure that out. Don't worry, I'll show you in a moment. But just give it a try here and uh, see if you can come up with uh, some real numbers on it. All right, so now let's go to the next slide. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's how we do it. 0.82 times $300, and then subtract from that 0.18 times $900. So that becomes 246, which is this, minus 162, which is that, and that equals $84 expected value. Okay. On strategy B, 
we have a 61% chance of making $700. We multiply those two together. And a 39% chance of losing $300. We multiply those two together. And we get $427 minus $117, leading to an expected value of $310. What that means is that with strategy A, on average, we expect to make $84 per trade. Not bad. We're making money each trade. That doesn't mean we'll make money every trade. Some trades will make money, some will lose. That's the average profit. So if we did 100 trades, we would expect to make $8,400. However, on this one, our average profit per trade is $310. So if we did 100 trades on this one, we'd be making 3100 No, or is that $31,000? $31,000. Okay. So obviously this is a much better strategy, even though it's only right 61% of the time. Now we're programmed in our society to think that being right is the goal. You know, my, I have three kids in school. They want to get A's in school. You don't get an A unless you get 90% on your tests. If you get 61%, well, that's a C. Here's your A. Well, that's an A minus, I guess. Um, and yet this is the A strategy because it makes more money. And this leads to my final point on this slide, which making money in the market is not just about being right. It's about how much you make when you are right versus how much you lose when you are wrong. Now, as you go through a test, you can have, you know, all these different trades. And you can say, okay, on this one I made $300. On this one I lost $200. On this one I made $900. On this one, I lost $100. And you can you know, continue to do that through your test. And you can add these up. So 300 and then minus 200, that brings us down to 100. And then we make 900, that brings us to 1,000. And then we lose 9 or 100, brings us down to 900. Well, these values here are your cumulative profit as you are testing your strategy. And that's what an equity curve does, is it basically charts how that growth happens. It demonstrates the performance of that strategy over time by accumulating the profits and losses. Now, ideally, equity curves should go up in a stable line without a lot of volatility. So what I mean by that is we don't want an equity curve, even if it grows from left to right, we don't want it doing this. Okay, because that will drive us crazy. And it, it has huge drawdowns where you have big losses. It has these sharp profits where you think you're the king of the world. That's not the kind of equity curve we want. We want our equity curve to kind of look like this. Where it more or less is a linear trend. So let me show you the equity curve that I have for the strategy I'm testing now. Now, I've added quite a bit more data points since I made this equity curve. This was as of September 20th. But what you can see is that the curve is more or less a straight line. Whoops. Okay, so I can draw more or less a straight line. Now, there was a period here where the strategy did really well. Between September 7th and September 12th, it had a real hot streak. Okay, and the, cur and the curve actually became a curve. It went linear. And then, after that bit of exuberance in the market, we had a period of, from September 12th to September 16th, where we had four days of kind of no performance at all, where the curve kind of flattened out and went sideways. And then went up for a few days, and then it went sideways again. And I can tell you since then, it's gone back to going up, but there was two or three days leading up to the Fed meeting last week when there wasn't great performance. It was kind of sideways. The days were, some days had a small loss, some days had a break even, wasn't a ton of profit. But what this curve shows is that using a $250 risk tolerance per trade, we started at $0 of profit. We actually had, I think, uh, one. The, the first day was actually a losing day. So you can see day one there was negative. So that was August 30th. And then it started to go into its sort of steady upward trend. There we had another losing day. Looks like September 2nd had some losses. Um, but overall, it grew quite nicely. It's gone from $0 of profit to about $65,000 of profit. So a very nice um, 
performance of this particular strategy. Now, I want to caution you. Don't think that if you had, if, if that I would have done this, that, that using $250 worth of risk, you, me, anyone else could have made $65, $65,000. And the reason I say that is because it's very, very difficult to catch every trade perfectly. We're human. If I could program my strategy to be 100% computerized, this would be quite realistic to make that $65,000. However, as humans, I'm quite happy if I can do one third of what the computer would do. Okay, um, And so ultimately, that probably makes you say, well, why don't you just figure out how to computerize it? I'm working on it. It's something I've been working on. And every, you know, every year I get better at computerizing my rules and making it just strictly logic-based, but there's still human judgment in there. And human judgment does two things. One, it misses some trades, which I spoke about. It also sometimes takes trades that aren't valid. Um, you know, as a computer, you take only trades that are valid, but when we interpret the market's um, activity in real time with our emotions, I take incorrect trades on a regular basis. I don't do it a ton, but still, you know, each week I can look back at a few trades where I said, say to myself, that didn't meet my rules. Why did I do that? Well, I got caught up in it. I thought I was being smart, whatever. Um, so I just want to point out that as a human being, we can do the same kind of a, of a curve, but it's going to be more like this. And that's simply because humans can't do as well as the computer. All right, so now let's switch to this concept of rules, tools, and process. So strategy trading is all about the rules, right? Well, then we need some tools to apply them, and then we need a process to make sure we find the trades that happen. Most traders only focus on the rules part. They say, okay, I'm going to buy stocks that have earnings growth three quarters in a row. That would be a fundamental approach. I'm going to buy stocks where the um, eight period moving average crosses above the 20 period moving average. It's a very simple technical analysis approach to rules-based trading. Um, and that's where they stop. They don't think about the tools they need to identify as many stocks as possible. And they don't think about the process that they have to employ to find them as quickly as possible without missing many. So when I started trading, I was pretty good with the rules part, but I didn't have great tools and I really didn't have great process. Well, then I built stock scores and that was a good tool. So stock scores was built in 2000, 2001. And then I started using TradeStation maybe probably 2005, I'm guessing. And that's another great tool, not so much for swing trading or not so much for position trading, but for day trading, it's a great tool. So I've always been working on tools and, and I'm always trying to build and improve my own tools. But what I've been working on mostly lately because the market has become so competitive because you're now trading against computers more than anything, is my process. I didn't have to have a great process 10 years ago like I have to have now because it's very easy to miss trades because the market can move very quickly. Why? Because you're competing against a computer. And so what I've worked on a lot in the last couple of years is process. So you need tools, you need process. What I'm going to show you now is the tools and the process that I use. So we're going to start by using the tools of stockscores.com and uh, the rules of the stock scores simple weekly strategy. Now this is a strategy that I teach in my investor course. So I'm not going to give you the rules. I'm going to more show you how I do it without telling you the specific rules because if you want the specific rules, you have to take the um, investor course on stock scores. <coughs> okay, so let's jump over to the stock scores website. Um, most of you are probably familiar with the website. You may not have seen the market scan tool. It's a, a lot of filters on this tool. It allows me to select a preset market scan or build my own market scan. I could say, show me all the stocks that have a price of between $5 and $20 that um, have a sentiment stock score of greater than 60 and made an abnormal move to the upside today and traded at least a thousand times today. I could run that report and there's 37 stocks that did that. So that's building your own scan on the fly. Or I can uh, use the market scan to run one of the presets. So I'm going to choose the stock score simple weekly scan for the Canadian market. So we'll pick that. 
and I can then click on the report and there are 62 stocks that meet those criteria. I can then say select all and view these in, I'm going to view these in a slideshow. And now look at these charts one at a time looking for certain patterns. All right, so this is where the human judgment part comes in. Most of the work has been done by the computer. Um, you know, there's probably 2,000, 3,000 stocks trading on the Canadian market. In a blink of an eye, we got 62 that meet the requirements of this strategy. Well, now I have to inspect the charts for certain patterns. So on this particular chart, for example, um, there was a pattern last week called a pennant pattern. And I'm going to use a new tool that I have which allows me to um, draw right on my screen. This is not on stock scores. I'm, I'm using a little tool to um, draw lines. Hopefully it's coming through on the video. I just actually want to check that. I've never used this tool before. Um, so let me just make sure it's coming through. Did, are you guys seeing that when I draw lines on there? I should have probably tested this before, but as I said, it's something I just started doing and I'm not sure that it's coming through. Hmm. That's too bad. Um, so are you, is, is, can you guys let me know, are you seeing the lines? I, I just drew two blue lines on this chart and I'd like to know if you see that. I'll draw another one. I'll draw this one in green. Just draw a big green scribble mark there. And let me know if that's coming through or not. Just type in the question box, yes or no. So if you see it or you don't see it, just uh, let me know by typing in the question box. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. All right, well, maybe it'll show up in the... Um, in the video when I do that. So I'm going to remove those. Oh, it looks like it came through. Okay. So, great. Sorry for the little delay there, but it's a new tool. I wanted to make sure it was working. All right. So anyway, the point of that, what I was wanting to show you here is that there was a little, what's called pennant break. So we have the top of the pennant, the bottom of the pennant like that. And we had a breakout last week. That was at 39 cents. This week's at 42 cents. Um, not bad, but I wouldn't buy this stock today. So let's go to the next one. And the process is I go through these charts looking for certain characteristics. Really what I want to see is an abnormal move out of a predictive chart pattern. So in this particular chart, there was a predictive chart pattern um, maybe two months ago and a break from that. Uh, and I'll show you that now. So whoops. Uh, what happened? just jump to the wrong chart here. Let me just fix that. Okay. So there was a predictive pattern here. This is called a pennant pattern. And I'll try to draw on this. And what I want everyone to notice is the abnormal move right here with a little pickup in volume. That's some of the key things I look for out of a predictive pattern. And you can see what's happened since then. The stock's gone up very quickly. Would I buy this stock today? Absolutely not, because it's gone up too much already. Um, but if I owned it, there's also no reason to sell it. So if you own EMH, which is listed on the Vancouver Exchange, I would um, hang on to it. All right, let's go through a few more and see if I can find a good one. And when I do find a good one, I will pause. Um, a lot of these stocks have gone up quite a bit already. This one looks pretty interesting. This is Surge Energy. So I'll draw on this chart here. And um, all right, so there's another one of these pennant patterns here. There's the top of the pennant the bottom of the pennant. Any of you that know something about technical analysis will know that that's a pennant pattern. Now the downside of this is that the trend into the pennant was down. So that's not ideal, but notice that right now we're breaking out of the tip of that pennant. 
volume is a little light, but keep in mind this is a weekly chart, and so um, it's only Wednesday. We could see a pickup of volume through the week, but this is a one I'd like you to keep an eye on. If it can close strong into the end of the week with some decent volume, it's a pretty good chart for a stock that will do well in the months ahead. All right, now this is an energy stock. We're going to see lots of energy stocks today because the um, OPEC agreed to set some production limits uh, at their meeting in November. That was announced late in the trading session today. And so you had a real jump in a lot of the um, oil and gas companies. All right, so i got to jump ahead to where I was. We'll go through a few of these charts, but what I'm really trying to show you with this is just the process. You run the market scan, and then you look at charts for certain patterns. And when you see one, you pause and you do the risk analysis. Uh, Ballard Power, pretty good chart. I wouldn't say outstanding. This is called a cup and handle pattern. If it can close the week at $3 or higher, I would give it a 7 out of 10 rating as a stock to likely go higher. So that's something for you to watch, uh, Ballard Power, um, if you like that sort of lower price stock. Um, I'm going to go through these pretty quick because I want to just do the whole process. Now, you'll notice I'm going through these charts quite quickly. And it does take some practice to get sort of fast. But once you've had that practice, you literally can go through 60 charts in a few minutes. And you have to do that once a week. Um, and so on a Saturday morning, if you can find half an hour, you can do the work and pick stocks that are good for your longer term portfolio, your you know, your RSP, your 401k, your retirement portfolio, wherever you are. Um, Interflex looks pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Uh, EFX. Um, I'll try to go through these as fast as I can. I know it's probably way too fast for anyone who um, is just learning how to read charts. I'm just trying to show you the process. So go through a few more of these. See if there's anything else. And it's typical, you know, if I'm looking at 60 charts in an evening or on a weekend, I probably only like two, one, three. So, you know, your your human intervention part, as I said, the computer does 80% of the work. Um, your 20% is to go through, like what we're doing now, 60 charts, and look for the pattern. Uh, that pattern's pretty good, key era, uh, T dot K-E-Y. Again, this is a weekly chart, so we've got to make sure that by the end of the week these are good. But if you read my weekly newsletter, this is a strategy I use quite often to find the stocks that I pick in the weekly newsletter. And if you're not on the weekly newsletter, go to Stock Scores, into the Products uh, Newsletters area. You can sign up for it. It's free. So um, sign up for that if you're not getting it already. All right, so we're just about done this scan. Onyx Corp made a break from a pennant last week getting a little follow through now. Looks to me like a stock that should do well in the months ahead. Um, so we've had two or three stocks that have good potential. I wouldn't say anything is awesome. And that's the way it is. You'll, you can go through this process for two months and not see anything that's awesome. And then one week you'll get 10 picks because the market makes an important break or something. All right, so that is the uh, process for what I call position trading, stock score simple weekly strategy. Now let's turn to swing trading. So swing trading, we can use stock scores as well, or we can use TradeStation. I'm going to show you both. So in stock scores, you go to the market scan. Actually, first thing you have to do is change your chart time frame. So I'm just going to pull up a chart, and I'm going to set this chart to a intraday chart, 13-minute candles going back 15 days. Click on create chart. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's not bad. Then I'm going to go to the market scan. I'm going to run a scan called the simple swing. I actually should have had those charts set to a 30 minute. So when you're doing it on stock scores, you should do that on a 30 minute. But what this does is looks for abnormal activity in a shorter term time frame. So this chart is a 15 day 13 minute. So let's see if I can draw on this here. So it's a 15 day 13 minute chart. And what I want everyone to notice is that it came alive right about there. It broke a downward trend line. This is on a 13 minute chart. 
It did so from a rising bottom. Volume was picking up. So the market was telling you pretty early in the day that something was going on at that stock. And that was at around 57 cents a share. It closed the day at 62. So it made a 10% gain after that. Now, I've organized my um, candidates here by price. So as we go down the list, and again, I'm doing this fast. But as we go down the list, the price goes higher because that's how I've sorted my list. Um, this one was good uh, yesterday. It made a little break from a pattern right here. Volume picked up there. So if you do this scan on stock scores, that's the kind of thing you're looking for. There's a pattern. There's a break from a pattern. There's the abnormal activity. That's the process on stock scores. All right. So let's jump over to TradeStation now where I'll show you that process. It's a lot more cumbersome on TradeStation, but it is in real time. Stock scores is delayed by about um, half an hour. So it's fine on um, if you do your scans maybe 45 minutes after the open. But if you want to catch the stocks that are moving even faster, you need to use something like TradeStation. So the process that I use in TradeStation <coughs> is I run a scan. I grab the symbols from that scan. And I look to see which ones have enough liquidity. Okay, so um, incidentally, just for your understanding here, this screen that I'm showing you is on my little laptop right now. I normally have this screen on a much bigger screen on my desk. Um, but because I'm running a webinar tonight, I couldn't show you my huge screen. So um, I, everything's kind of squished. It doesn't normally look this squished. Um, so anyway, I grab stocks based on liquidity. So I'll sort this by number of trades, grab those that are most liquid. I'm not going to do them all because um, it takes too long. So I'll grab some of them. And then I paste them into another window where it looks for something called action candles. And if it finds an action candle, it'll print a value there. End of the day, there's not usually any action candles, but at the beginning of the day, there's lots. So actually, if I change this to um, look to the first candle of the day, hopefully this will work. So I'm just going to, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Format, action candle, here we go. So I'm just going to change the look back here to 29. Say OK. So see now there's some values printed in there. So those stocks where there's a value, so Apple Computer made an action candle at the opening candle of the day. So let me show you what that looks like. So if we pull up this 13-minute chart, see how there's a pink dot there? Pink dots are action candles. Now this particular pink dot wasn't from a predictive pattern. Looking back to September 13th, there was a pink dot that was from a predictive pattern. So this chart that you're looking at right now is a 13-minute chart. It's going back to September 8th. Okay. Each one of these bars is 13 minutes. So this was today. This was yesterday. This was September 13th. And you can see there we had that pink dot. And look what happened two days later. It went up quite nicely. Let's look at some others from today. Um, I, I looked at these just before I started the webinar today. So these were some stocks that made pink dots, action candles, from a predictive pattern in the last 10 days or so. So this particular one, there's your pink dot right there. This pattern here is called an ascending triangle. And it, so it had the pink dot, had abnormal volume, abnormal price action. And the stock went from, uh, let's call it $1.90 and hit, uh, what did it hit? Yes, or three days ago it hit, sorry, I've got something on my screen that's covering it up, but um, I've just got to move this. You don't see it, but on my screen I have something. So it hit 290. So it went from $1.90 to 290 in four, four days. Okay, so that's swing trading. You're holding for typically less than two weeks. Um, I would say more common four or five days, and you're looking for these things called action candles from predictive chart patterns. Um, there was an action candle on the CARA right there. It's the same pattern. That's called a ascending triangle. And that stock over the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days has gone up nicely. 
and gone from, uh, I don't know, 640 or so to 850, you know, that's a 30, I'm just roughly 30% gain in five or six days. Well, the tool is what helped me find it and the process. What I've just shown you is the tool and the processes that I use for swing trading. Swing trading, the great thing about it, and you'll notice it even from this chart, most of the action candles happen in the first hour of the day. Um, so if you only can look at the market for the first hour of the day, look at this action candle, that was in the opening hour. This one was in the opening hour. This one, opening hour. This one, opening hour. Any pink dot or is an action candle. So the action candles tend to happen early in the day. And so you can do your work as a swing trader in the first hour, maybe even two hours of the day, and then go do something else. And we have some risk management methods that we use so that you can leave and not have to sit by your screen all day um, once you learn the rules of the strategy. And I'll show you how you learn the rules of the strategy in a moment. All right, let's switch now to day trading. Okay, so that's the simple swing. Let's now do the strategy that I've been testing through the month of September, which is the intraday pullbacks and superhero strategy. And for this, I use uh, TradeStation. I can use stock scores as well. I can sort of combine them, but you definitely have to have a real-time charting program. And I love TradeStation. I've been using it for a long time, so that's sort of the one that I prefer to use. I have some students that use other platforms. Um, uh, what's the one that others use? Oh, I can't remember the name now. It'll come to me in a minute. Anyway, we're going to use TradeStation. So let's go back to that. So it's the same screen, actually. I just run the um, strategy in a little different way. So again, I do the gainer scan. I copy and paste the symbols. I grab the ones that have liquidity. But instead of pasting them into this window, which is called a radar screen, I paste them into this window, which calculates abnormal volume. So you'll see here this indicator that's my own indicator. It's not part of TradeStation. None of these indicators I'm showing you are part of TradeStation. I've written them. I make them available to my students. You import them into TradeStation. That's the beauty of TradeStation is you can uh, import indicators into it. But th these indicators don't come with TradeStation. So they're my own invention. So this volume indicator looks for whether stocks are trading abnormal volume. So let's look at Caterpillar. It had a value that was high enough to be an abnormal stock. And you can see when you look at this two minute chart, and I'll just change the scale here a little bit, that the volume today was higher than yesterday. And that's why it's on my list, because it's trading with some emotion, it's trading with abnormal volume. Now in this particular case, um, this stock met the requirements of two of my strategies. It met the requirements of my uh, pullback strategy right here and it met the requirements of my simple, um, sorry, superhero strategy right here. See that little pink dot there again? Um, this one's got a white dot and a blue dot. So there's all these little indicators that I have, which um, again, it's the computer doing 80% of the work. When those little blue dots print on the chart, I get an alert. And then I know to look at that particular stock and I do my final 20% where I look at the pattern. Well, this one had what's called a flag pattern. And then here there was an ascending triangle pattern there. So it met the criteria of my intraday pullback and superhero strategy. And then what I do is I plot something called reward for risk lines. Again, this is something I teach in my courses. So for let's just use this first entry signal. My reward for risk lines would look something like that. And so by the end of the day, this stock had moved up to, um, it closed at 86.59 which represented seven and a half, roughly, seven and a half times risk, which means if I risked $100, I made $750 on this trade. If I risked $1,000, I made $7,500 on this trade. And um, that's, a, that's a good day trade. I mean, any, any trade where you get more than five RR is, is excellent. There was a couple uh, good ones today. I'll show you one other. I think it's ESV, if I remember correctly. Um, ESV. Uh, yes. So this one met the criteria of my pullback play right there. Um, bro broke a pullback, basically. But there's some other reasons why it was um, a valid trade for that strategy. So again, if I'm going to plot my reward for risk lines on this one, I would go something like this. 
So my entry price was at $7.47. At the end of the day, it closed at $8.15, which represented six and a half times risk. So if I risked $1,000, this trade made me $6,500. If I risked $100, this trade made me $650. All right. So the stocks that I was monitoring that gave valid trades today are in this list right here. This was my list from today. And um, I would say today wasn't a great day. There was probably more losers than normal, but it was still a profitable day um, because of some of the big movers like Caterpillar and ESV. Um, it was uh, a good day. You see ESV there as an action candle. So that is the day trading process. All right, I'm going to pause for a moment and just check and see if there's any questions. And then I'm going to show you um, how I teach people how to do all this stuff. So let me just check the questions thing here. Um, so people are talking about other platforms, NinjaTrader, Realtek, Metastock. I've tried them all. Um, I would say of those three, Realtek's probably my favorite. But it doesn't um, really allow for my indicators to work. Uh, Ninja Trader does, kind of, but you have to be a pretty good programmer. And the, I, I tried Ninja Trader. The problem I found with it was that it was a bit unreliable. Now that was probably five years ago, so it could be much better now. Um, at the time, it was a little bit unreliable. So, all right, I don't see any questions. So, and and uh, oh, someone's asking about Thinkorswim. I've never used Thinkorswim, so I can't give you any feedback on that one. I've never used Invest Tools, so I can't give you any feedback on that one. Um, what platform am I using to automate my trading? It's TradeStation and I stock scores, I suppose, um, where I'm doing, you know, again, 80% of the work with the, these programs. <clears throat> Can you use these um, strategies on indices, commodities, ETFs? Yes, uh, you can. I focus on stocks and some ETFs. Um, All of the algorithmic trading that I'm doing is being developed in TradeStation, but TradeStation is limited because it doesn't allow analysis on multiple time frames. So I can't, that's one of the reasons I can't fully automate my strategy um, unless I use some much more advanced tools. So um, that's something I'm maybe going to do when I get some time. I just haven't had time to do that. Can my indicators be imported into other platforms? No, they cannot. Um, what do you think of TD Waterhouse Advanced Dashboard? Sorry, not familiar with it. Can't give you much feedback on that. What are my exit criteria for swing and day trading? Those are um, taught in the course, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. Can you tell us what tools you are using to draw lines on the charts? So that's something called Zoom It. Zoom It. However, I don't know... Actually, you probably can. I was going to say, I'm not sure that it would work. It's a, it's a Windows program. So if you have Windows, you can download Zoom it. I think it's free. I don't think I paid for it. If I did pay for it, it was cheap because I don't even remember what it cost. But I actually think it's free. Uh, so look up uh, Zoom it. It um, allows you to draw. I'm using um, a Microsoft uh, laptop that allows me to draw my screen with a pen. So that's why I'm not sure if it'll work if you don't have that kind of computer, but I think it does as long as you use a mouse. So I will um, I, I will welcome you to give it a try and let me know how it works. Um, Snagit is another tool I use, and it's great, um, probably better than Zoomit, but Zoomit is a little less cumbersome. You can kind of draw really quickly because you just use keystrokes with your, so what I do is I hit Control-2, and then I can draw on my screen once I hit Control-2 with my little pen or with my mouth. Um, do I have a favorite computer? Right now, I really love this new Microsoft, uh, what do they call it? This, I can't remember what the heck they call it. The, the Microsoft laptop that they came out with maybe two years ago. Um, I think they're great. So, um, the Surface Book, that's right. So there's a Surface and then there's a Surface Book, which is the laptop. I have the Surface Book and I, I actually really like it. Super powerful. Um, I can run two 4K, 40-inch screens off of it. It's it's a great computer for day traders, uh, or for any trader, for any investor, for anyone, I think. Um, I'm really happy with it. It does have some typical Microsoft quirks, 
I think anyone who's used a Microsoft product will know that. Um, but I find that there's far less bugs today than when I got the uh, machine six months ago. So they're definitely ironing out some of the problems. All right, let's get back to the presentation. What I want to show you now is, um, and I will answer some questions at the end again as well. What I want to show you now is a little tour of the Stock Scores Education Center. For those that want to learn how to do what I've been showing you tonight, you can go into education and there are um, free lessons here. These are the getting started lessons, all free. If you want to learn how to, whoops, if you want to learn how to, um, sorry, if you want to learn how to read charts and do risk management and what is the expected value of the trade, exit strategies, those sorts of things. Um, actually, not exit strategies, but well, all these topics here, that's taught in the foundation course material. If you want to learn my strategies, so my investor strategies are taught in the investor section and my active trader strategies are taught in that section. And how to use TradeStation is also taught in that active trader section there. The way it works is um, you can watch, you can read a lesson. So I can click on this six elements of chart patterns and it'll come up like that. I can watch a video, click on the little video icon and watch a video on how that works. I can print it off. I can view a PDF of it and print it off. And finally, I can do a little quiz to see if I understand the concepts of that particular strategy. So that's how the foundation area is organized. You have a video, a lesson, an assignment, and a test. In the investor and active trader sections, it's just the lesson, which is the written part, and the video. There's no assignment or test because the assignment and the test is actually doing it in the market. You know, you're applying a strategy, right? So that's how that works. Okay, so that's a quick tour of the Education Center. I'll tell you a little bit about how you can uh, get started with learning this. The course material goes like this. Um, if you register for the uh, Active Trader or Investor course, those are those two there, you get my book in the mail. You then go online and you do the foundation material, which will take you probably eight hours to get through. And then you learn my strategies. You don't have to learn every strategy. Pick the ones that you think are right for you. You have the choice of active trader strategies, which are day and swing trading, or investor strategies, which are um, like that stock score simple weekly strategy that we did. Every lesson in the foundation has a written component, a video, an assignment, and a test. In the um, strategy areas, you have the lesson and the assignment. You work through the material online. You have support from me as you go through that material. You can email me with your questions. You can, when you pick some stocks, you can send me your picks and I'll tell you whether you're applying the strategy correctly. With the investor course, you get access to the stock scores tools for six months. After six months, it's $300 a year to continue your access. The Active Trader course gives you everything in the investor course. So you get everything in the investor um, material, plus you get access to the Active Trader material. That includes the Active Trader lessons, but it also includes my stock scores indicators for TradeStation. So if you want to have those blue dots and pink dots and white dots and all my other indicators for TradeStation, if you want to make a career out of trading the stock market, you should take the Active Trader course. Um, again, you get support from me. Something I'm starting um, November 14th, so it's a little ways away, but uh, for those that want me to really hold your hand through the learning process, I'm going to do a four-month mentorship program with a small number of people. Each week we will have a meeting online, live meeting, where I will show you different aspects of the course, a lot of question and answer, just, you know, really getting into the details. So you're going to get, uh, well, four months times, you'll probably get 15 one-hour classes, at least an hour, some may be longer. Um, once, once a week, we meet online. If you can't make that meeting, they are going to be recorded, so you can watch them again. If you want to watch them 20 times, you can watch them as often as you want. So you get four months of weekly live online classes, plus you get a one-on-one -on -one coaching session more towards the end 
where I'll work with you specifically on your trading plan. So everyone's different, what strategies they're going to employ. I'll help you get your, your um, platform set up. Just kind of that one-on-one -on -one approach that I feel like everyone needs. But the other four months of, of um, meetings is basically me going through the material that I would um, go through with one of my mentorship students in the past. What, what I was finding, I used to do these mentorship programs one-on-one -on -one for six months. And I found that I was teaching people the same thing for 95% of it. And it seemed kind of redundant. So I thought, why not lower the cost? Because the cost before was $7,500. Um, why not lower the cost, make it so that everyone can learn the stuff that everyone needs to know on those weekly meetings? And then, you know, we'll have one other coaching session where I can sort of fine tune each person. So it's a great way to overcome procrastination and make sure you don't misunderstand things. Speed up your learning curve. I just find when I go through this process with my mentorship students, they just learn it better and they don't waste time. And so anyway, I'm going to start this uh, mentorship program on November 14th. And it's uh, open to anyone that has taken my course in the past. You can upgrade to this. Or if you want to start with the mentorship program, basically you're getting the active trader course plus the four months of life um, classes. One other thing that I'm doing in October um, is this active live trading. It's $295. It's only open to active trader students. So if you um, take my active trader course, I will give this to you for free um, for the month of October. So if you decide tonight or in the next couple of days that you want to do the active trader course now, then you'll be able to watch me trade live for the month of October, every morning for the first two hours. Some days it might be longer, but basically the first two hours of the trading day, I will enter my trades, I exit all my trades at the close, so you don't really have to watch any more than the first two hours. So it's a great way to learn and see what I do. Basically the way this works is you see my one of my screens. I've got, I'm looking at my office right now, I have 10 screens in front of me, 11 actually. So I've got 11 screens, you're gonna see one of those which is all the stocks that I'm looking at as, as I look at them. And when I make a trade, I will call it out. I'll say, I am buying Caterpillar CAT at 85.20 um, with a risk per share of 34 cents, something like that. People that take my course know what all that means. And when I get a moment, I will actually type into that screen that, that trade. So if you missed it, you're, let's say you're in the bathroom, you didn't hear me call it out. I will enter it on the screen, but it might be two or three minutes later. It's all about when I get the time to type it in. So that's active live trading. For the whole month, it's $295 if you took my course in the past. But if you um, want to take the active trader course now, every time I do a course, I always try to throw in something for free. So that's what the offer is this month going into October, is you'll get that month of watching me trade live for free. All right, so what, is it, what do these courses cost? Foundation course, $9.95. Investor course, $24.95. Active trader course, $34.95. Four-month mentorship course, $54.95. This used to be $74.95. So I've lowered the cost, but now instead of doing it one-on-one -on -one for the whole time, I'm doing it with a small number of people. Um, we meet online. You ask me questions. Basically the same method we're using as for this presentation tonight. Um, and we'll see how it works. I've, I've never done it that way, but I've done mentorship for a number of years. And as I said, I find that everyone has the same questions. So I can lower the cost and, and do it with a smaller number of people um, that way. If you decide that you want to do the investor course and then you want to upgrade to the active trader course later, you pay the difference plus $250. So the difference there is $1,000 plus $250. So you can upgrade for $1,250. Same thing if you want to go from this to this. You pay the difference, 2000 plus 250 um, So if you've taken the Active Trader course in the past and you want to enroll in the mentorship course, um, then you would pay the difference. By the way, there is nowhere on the website yet that you can sign up for the mentorship. So if you have an interest in that, it's six weeks away. There's no rush. But send me an email, and I'll put you on my list. 
Um, the number of spots will be limited. I, I encourage you, if you have an interest in this, send me an email. I'm not going to ask for any money today, but just tell me you're interested in that so I can keep a little list of people that want to maybe do that uh, mentorship course in November. Um, one final thing, um, and actually I'll put this poll up while I, um, while I just tell you something that's kind of important. And let me just start this poll here. So your screen should change in a moment. There we go. So if you can answer this poll for me, that'd be great. So anyway, um, for the past few months, probably five months, uh, stock scores is getting rebuilt. Um, it's not really going to change a lot in terms of the tools are going to be the same, uh, the charts are the same, all that kind of thing. We're adding a new charting, or well, I'm hoping to add a new charting. We're having some problems with it, but my hope is that we'll have a new charting application plus the same one that we have now. So there'll be two options. Um, we are going to uh, make stock scores work on your phone, your iPad. Right now they kind of work on those, but it's not great. And some of you may have found that it's a bit frustrating with using the website on an iPad, for example. So it's coming with a new design approach, which is called responsive design websites. And it's just basically modernizing the stock score site. It's also going to allow you to register for things like the mentorship course, um, whereas right now you can't do that on stock scores. Um, we've got some cool new charts, which I really hope we're going to be able to make work because they're very cool. You can draw on them. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so that's being worked on as well. So once all these little pieces are done, the website will launch. I hope that will be sometime in October. Um, we're very close, but we're, as I said, we're having some issues with the new charts and a few other things. So, um, And when we launch it, there'll be a few tweaks and things that come after that. But anyway, that's something that's being done right now. So watch for that. And uh, again, just to summarize, if you want to do the Active Trader course now, you just go onto the Stock Scores website to um, stockscores.com slash learn. Maybe I'll show you that. So go to, I'll just go to um, the home page and go to see this here, learn to trade with the Stock Scores approach. Click on learn more. And that is a page that tells you all about the Foundation Investor Active Trader course. You can sign up right there. And if you do that, um, in the next couple of days, you'll be able to watch me trade live through the month of October for free. If you took my Active Trader course two years ago, you can watch me trade live through the month of October for $295. Many of you have probably already registered for that because I announced that two weeks ago, but um, you can still do that. So, um, And if you want to do that, email me because I'll have to send you a link. Um, the other thing is the uh, mentorship is coming up November 14th. So sometime that week we'll start. I don't know if we'll start Monday or Tuesday, but um, we'll be starting our first meeting that second week of November. And um, we've got lots of webinars coming up. Um, there's, If you go to the homepage on Stock Scores, there is a page area here where you can... I'll just take down this poll, by the way. I think we're done this now. Close that. Sorry, I'm telling you all these things, not realizing that uh, you're not seeing my screen. So there's the learn to trade with the stock scores approach button. You click on that. That takes you to this page. And if you want to learn about our upcoming webinars, go to the home page. And there's a link right here up in the top right, upcoming webinars. So there's one there. I'm going to add some more. I just haven't had some time to do that yet. But there'll be webinars through the month of October, November, I probably won't do any in December, but um, there'll be some in October, November anyway. So keep an eye on that. And of course, keep an eye on the weekly newsletter. If you want to enroll in the weekly newsletter, there's a place there to register for that. Um, you can also go to products, newsletters, and um, sign up right there. I'm already signed up, so it doesn't let me to. We don't spam people. We don't send out a bunch of garbage. So, I mean, we're asking you to share your email address so we can send you my newsletter, but um, I'm, I hate spam, so we don't do it. Uh, you get the odd email. Well, you get one email from me a week, and once in a while you'll get an email from me saying we're doing some webinar or something like that. So that's how we do that. All right, so I'll just check and see if there's any questions, and then we'll wrap up. Um, just going through the questions. I think some of them I've answered already. Um, 
after October, will there be any service for your trade screen for your active trader students? Most likely I'll do it again in November. Um, it just depends how it goes in October. I, f I find it quite, um, in the past I found it quite distracting and it kind of hurt my own trading. So I'm doing it a little different this time and I think it'll be better. Um, and so most likely it will be offered in November, but I can't promise it until I, you know, go through uh, doing it in October for a little while. Um, if you would like information about the mentorship, I have some people posting that in the questions. I need you to email me. I'll put my email address up in a moment, just because I, I can't get these things off of the questions here. So there is my email address. There's also the web page where you can get more information on the courses. And uh, feel free to email me. I'm happy to answer you. I typically answer questions within the day, so um, fire those off to me. Do I know anything about Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation? I do not. I've never used it. Um, sorry, I can't give you much feedback on that. Uh, I don't see too many other questions, so I think I'll wrap up there. I want to thank you all for joining me. I did record this as a video. I hope it worked. Let me just... Uh, wonder where my yes so it looks like